Hello everyone, this is Frank from Apple One to One. I'd like to do a little discussion on how to add tables into a keynote as well as a couple of other features that I find to be particularly interesting. What I have here is I've opened a template. Now in here it says double click to edit. Well you can also just single click and drag it wherever you want. Okay, so let's put it up here and this one will just move up here and you double click on it and you can put in anything you want so I'm just gonna put in Apple one two one and I'm just gonna leave this like this but the interesting thing that I wanted to show you is that you can take a picture to use as a backdrop and an interesting thing you can do with it so we're gonna to go to media and we're gonna to go to photos now I have a an album that I called Apple one to one and in here I have um, our logo that I you see I have two I have one with our emojis and the Apple one to one in it but I've also have one here with just the emojis so I'm gonna click on that and put it in there it just puts it right in the center you can then click on these little bars handlebars or whatever you want to call them and size it okay and make it whatever size you like move it wherever you want and you see the yellow line just when you're centered now the neat thing that i think is I can come up here and look at so over here on the right it says opacity you can slide this to the left and make this translucent click on it and then just slide it up so you can have it like that if you wanted to just something that you can do if you have a picture and you want to use that as your backdrop you can make it translucent put all your stuff on top of it this is our apple one-to-one -one tables within keynote our logo i put down our faces now now we're going to do the table now there are a couple of ways to bring this table in if uh we also have a video out there on numbers on how to create this particular table in numbers you're going to do it pretty much basically the exact same way you could if you had something like this in numbers you could copy the table and put it right into the spreadsheet or you can come up here and click on tables select any one of these tables and size it put in the number of columns and rows that you prefer and it'll put it right in now so what we have here is we have the symbol for the stocks on row one all right over here down on the left side we have name price volume 52 week high low annual dividend earnings per share and pe ratio now these numbers that i have to the right refer to the stock um, function i'm going to show you how to use those you double click in it, it's going to show you the formula you can move this wherever you'd like so notice when i clicked on it over on the right it takes you right to the function tells you all about it and all of the options you have within it so here we have stock meaning that's the formula you're going to use b1 which is the symbol now notice there's a dollar sign here so if we click on this down arrow this is going to give you some options preserve the row and or preserve the column this is what's referred to as an absolute reference in this particular case we want to just have the preserve the row not the column because as we copy this over we want it to reference GM, HOG, TSLA, and T. 
So it's just going to be B dollar sign one. And then next, you see is a comma, and then next is name. So if I click on that down arrow, you see these are all of the options that are off to the right. And what I did was when I set this table up, I said, oh, these are the items that I want. So for quick reference, this is going to tell me the number. So if we in this cell, we want the name. So that's going to be one name. Boom. So there's our name. Now, since I'm assuming that all of the rest of the stuff is blank. So we have our base formula. So you can you see that yellow dot? You're going to hold it, slide down, copy it. All right. Now, notice it brings back Apple Inc. in each one. And that's because if you double click on it, this portion says name, which is right here, which is number one. So if you click on the down arrow, you say, oh, I want price. Okay. Same thing here. You go volume, which is eight. Fifty-two week high. Now is eleven. Now there's another way. That if you're used to typing and you prefer, you don't like these tokens. This is how Apple defaults to what's called token. You can click next to the function and say show formula as text. It gives you the opportunity to see it in its raw text form. So you see stock B1, 1, meaning name. So all you would do is put your cursor in there, take the 1 out, and put in 11. And there's your 52-week high. Same is true over here. The 52-week low is 12. Put your cursor in there. 12, boom. Annual dividend. Now, you can do this however best fits your working mode. So just click on this and annual dividend. <clears throat> your earnings per share. And your P.E. ratio. It is 23. Oh, I took the comma out. So you got to be careful. You want the comma in there. Otherwise, you got to get an error. All right. Now, now that that's all in there, you want to highlight these because we want to format them. So you're going to come back to over here in format cell. We're going to do currency. Defaults to two decimals. I like to see any negative numbers in red. Hopefully, if you're buying stocks, you don't have any, but you never know. Then over here, the same thing. All right. So now once that's done, now we're going to assume that General Motors, Hog, Tesla, and T are all empty. First, you have to highlight the entire row. Then your yellow dot in the center here, slide it over, release it. Okay, now you have all the same formatting as you did in column A. Notice now in Tesla, we have an error. Now, what? anytime you see a triangle with an exclamation point, there's an error in the formula somewhere. So, what this is telling me right off the bat, that Tesla does not have an annual dividend. So... How can we fix that? Well, I can't fix Tesla, but double click on it. We're gonna we're gonna fix the formula, and I'm gonna show it as text. This may make it a little easier to understand. So you're gonna go to the very beginning of the formula, and you're gonna put in if error open parenthesis. All right. Then you're going to go to the end of the formula and you're going to put in comma, quote, and I'm going to use n slash a, close quote, close paren. 
All right. Check mark, and you see it replaced a zero value with not available. Now, the only other thing that, um, not the other thing, but one thing that I like to do is in something like this, you see it's kind of nondescript. You're not really paying attention to it, maybe, but you want to, if you're giving a presentation, you're going to want to point that out. So one of the things you can do is in formatting, go to cell, conditional highlighting, click on it, add a rule. So in this case, this is text. So we're going to go to text is n slash a and it will default to bold but you have some options here you can do red green blue gray or you can select a color right so let's make it uh, yellow and there you go now notice the na up here i put in lowercase in the formula i used uppercase it's not going to matter as long as it matches. All right. Click on done. And there's your table. Now, anytime you're presenting and you have something like this, the point of doing these formulas from stock is that it's going to go out to Yahoo Finance <coughs> and pull in current information. So you don't have to. They're not stagnant numbers. So it's not like you're going to have to go in there and update this every time you're giving a presentation. All right. The next slide is another table that we've added. And what I did was I, I used the symbols. Price per share. Now, this is a, a fictitious number. I just put in a number. The number of shares I purchased. And then a formula for the total investment. I got current price, and we're going to go through each of these. So if I double-click in here, you're going to see that's just, just a value that I keyed in. The number of shares, again, is just a value I keyed in. Total investment, you can see how it's highlighted here. If you double-click on it, we can see that it's the AP, Apple price per share, which is here, times the Apple number of shares. So it's... Uh, I paid $100 per share. I bought 300 shares. That's $30,000. This is current price. And how did we get that? We used the stock function, B1, and price. Just like we did in the previous table. There you go. <clears throat> the next one, if you look at this, all I did was I said this is the APPL current price, which is right here, times the number of shares, which is here. That's giving me my current value. Profit and loss. I just took the number of the value now minus my investment. And that's going to give me the difference, profit or loss, okay? So we're assuming it's $9,000 profit. Capital gains tax. Now, all right, so what, what's this? Well, it, when you sell a stock, um, you have to pay a capital gains tax. In other words, you have to pay tax on the profit. So what this, what, what the, how the, whoops, get that out of there. All right. The formula is the profit and loss times, this is a, the absolute reference that we talked about before for both column and row. The capital gains tax, I believe, is still set at 15%. So up in cell column F, row 1, I put in 15%. And I'm referencing that here. And it's telling me that on this $9,000, I'm going to pay $1,356. Now, this is a simplistic situation. This may not be totally accurate. you got to talk to your accountant. This is just to give you an idea of some things that you can do with tables. The net, the net what I termed net formula is this, the profit and loss, 
minus your capital gains tax. And this is going to be your net. All right. Now, just one thing you want to note that you can. Now, here you see you have a negative. I don't really, I don't think you're going to get a negative capital gains tax. Just remember that any losses that you incur uh, are tax deductible up to $3,000 per year. No more than $3,000 per year. All right. So I hope this helped. I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with Keynote. Now, if we play this, hit play as you're doing your presentation. Boom. Slide to slide. Whatever. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. And um, don't forget to hit the like if you have any questions or comments. Place them down below. Talk to you soon. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.